Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Welcome back everybody, Jeff Frick here, GM of theCUBE. We are live in Las Vegas at EMC World 2015, our sixth EMC World. We're really excited to be here. We've been going wall to wall for three days. We got two cubes. We'll do a whole lot of interviews. I don't know what the final count will be, Stu. I think we're well over 40 after a couple of days. So joining this next segment by my co-host, Stu Miniman. Thanks, Welcome. Jeff. So you know, we talk on theCUBE about CUBE alums, and I think what we actually need is we need some statuses. So we had Pat Gelsinger on earlier today. He's got a playlist. So our guest for this segment, Jason Nolet, has been on theCUBE many times. I think we kind of, is it, you know, it's the veteran status or something okay, like that. We'll have to work so on that. So SVP of data center switching, routing, and analytics with Brocade. Uh, Brocade, you know, huge presence at EMC World as always. Uh, love the sponsorship you guys, Jason, are doing with uh, Charity Water here at the show. Uh, you know, the press analyst activity gets you there. I mean, you know, Brocade is everywhere at the show. So yeah. welcome back and uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, platinum frequent flyer status. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Cards in the mail. A absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, you know, g give us the 40,000 view of, uh, you know, Brocade at this show and, you know, wh where things are with the company. Sure. I mean, a couple of things that we've announced uh, in combination with the MC at the show is, um, support or really continuing support for fiber channel connectivity and the VSpecs offering uh, reference architecture, converged infrastructure. This time, of course, extending that offering to the VMAX 3 array, which we think is a great extension and a natural complement for fiber channel SAN technology, but also continued support for Extreme IO and the new versions that EMC's come out with there. I mean, in that case, both connectivity through fiber channel SANs, which is really important for customers who want to fold all flash arrays into existing SAN environments, but also a new offering uh, in comb a combination with EMC, and that is around dedicated IP storage fabrics, where customers have realized the opportunity to build a dedicated network for very little cost, but one delivers a level of availability and performance that's very analogous to what they've had in fiber channel SAN environments. So Extreme IO is supportive of that as well, and that's the new Connectrix VDX 6740B that's part of the portfolio. Yeah, well, I mean, Brocade's had a 15-year relationship with EMC on the fiber channel side. Um, no surprise to me that the, the Ethernet side's there. Makes a whole lot of sense. Um, I wonder if we can unpack a little bit that converged discussion that you had. You, you and I have talked for the last few years about as we converge down, you know, does that limit the ability for other suppliers to get in? Brocade's a supplier to, you know, the industry out there. Cisco with their UCS you know, drove a lot into the market, but Brocade's been doing a good job and in more and more solutions. So what have you seen change over the last couple of years in, in the converged and hyper-converged market? Yeah, I, th I think in terms of converged infrastructure and net now hyper-converged infrastructure that a lot of customers are opting for that middle ground of reference architectures. And that is, you know, between kind of a single SKU delivered by a single vendor and the full do-it-yourself model, the in-between model is a reference architecture, and vSpecs is the poster child for that. And as you know, we were an original member in the launch of, uh, of vSpecs, both with our fiber channel technology and our VDX Ethernet fabric technology. And what we hear continuously from customers is, they like the balance of having something that's tested, certified, delivered by a single vendor, single channel partner in the case of vSpecs, um, but one that gives them choice at every layer of the component. And we think that ultimately represents a great balance between all of the benefits and pros of converged infrastructure. So reference architectures we think is the sweet spot and, and that's resonating very strongly with customers. Yeah, and, and even the VSpecs Blue though is an appliance, so that's really a single solution that EMC helps drive and, and you're an integral piece it of It is, and we're included in that offering and we're very happy to extend the partnership with EMC on that. We think that's another great opportunity to have customers leverage the innovation and the differentiation that EMC is now taking advantage of with the VDX technology and VCS fabric. All right, so usually, Jason, EMC World's the same week as Interop. This year, Interop was actually last week, so I've been out here in Vegas since Wednesday. Uh, but, you know, we've been talking for years about how, you know, networking has been changing, Brocade's branding on it is the new IP. So, help explain to our audience, you know, what, what's Brocade's position on the new IP? You know, where, where are we going with the network? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think, you know, the new IP is a, a term coined, I think, primarily by industry analysts and some press that essentially asserts that there is a new generation of networking technology that needs to be deployed in the data center in particular, but all parts of the network over time in support of the new megatrends that we see in the industry, whether it's big data analytics and the impact it has on traffic profiles, uh, certainly cloud architectures, both private and public, are you know seeing um, adoption and, and customers are realizing the benefits of the flexibility and agility there. 
that has very direct implications on the network as well. Um, and then things like mobility and the fact that you know any application, any data set wants to be accessed from any device at any time, anywhere. These are things that you know previous network technologies were never designed to accommodate. Um, and so the new IP is this notion that there is a new architecture, there's a new philosophy around how you build next generation networks, data center and otherwise, to accommodate these mega trends in the industry. Yeah, so I believe I've asked you this question before, but how many of the enterprises are ready for this? Uh, well, one of the things I'm, I'm trying to you know, help process and, and get your viewpoint is what customers have is there's a certain size of customer that this makes complete sense for. And I wonder if you get down in kind of the mid or lower parts of the market, if it might make sense for them to just go to a co-located facility or allow somebody else to take care of some of the big networks. I mean, the whole SDN thing is hard. Yeah. So, yeah, I want your know, thoughts on that. I think in the enterprise space, and, and you know, whether it's small, medium enterprise, or even larger enterprise, it's a hybrid cloud world. It is today, everybody's leveraging SaaS of one form or another. I do think, though, that customers and IT organizations in mid to large size enterprise are looking at their IT infrastructure and feeling this relevance gap. And the relevance gap is that they've got lines of businesses and, and user stakeholder communities in their businesses that are going around them out to public cloud infrastructure of one form or another. And the reason they're doing that is because it's faster, it's quicker, and in many cases it's cheaper. So the IT organization and, and IT leadership are saying, how do I close that relevance gap? How do I be the internal service provider more consistently, more often to my constituency? Um, and so they're very hungry to solve that problem. So they know they have to leverage many of the same architectural principles that the larger cloud service providers have adopted, but many things that are also unique to mid-sized enterprise and, and the kinds of um, characteristics that they need around the network. So we think ultimately that the new IP and the philosophy around open architectures and open source, the philosophies around a more software-centric architecture going forward, um, the notion that really customers want a very strong ecosystem of partnerships that can deliver best of breed technology at every layer of the stack, I think is what those customers believe now is the answer to this relevance gap and how they close that. And you didn't even mention the Internet of Things. Internet of Things <laughs> is, a whole nother, stuff is yeah. a whole nother It's a whole nother uh, thing that I think ultimately also is one of those things that has very direct and concrete impact on the network and what the network needs to do. Um, in that case, you know, lots of volume, very bursty, very small kinds of, of data transmissions going on. So I think the industry has yet to fully come to terms with that. But again, it's another proof point around why you can't rely on the network you built for client server computing 10 years ago. You have to rethink that architecture to make sure it's future proof for things like Internet of Things. Yeah, I, I mean, Jason, I, I kind of look at what, you know, the, the the big networking guy out there pushes with their kind of IOE, IOT thing, and I, I feel like I'm scratching my head. I understand more devices are going to cause more traffic, but I don't yet understand what the network is doing uniquely to handle that. Is it just too early, or are there things that I'm missing? What, what, what's your take on that? I think it's very early, but I would say that um, scale is obviously a, a natural parameter that has to be addressed in an Internet of Things kind of environment. That's frankly where um, we've been driving a very strong agenda around software-centric networking. The more we can deliver network services in software form factor rather than kind of the legacy purpose-built boutique appliances, the better it is for customers to be able to scale up that environment in real time, right? And then, and then essentially treat those network services like VMs, like they do with all their other applications where they can move them around, spin them up, spin them down, and be much more flexible than having to rack additional purpose-built appliances. So that's one property of the new IP that I think lends itself very well to addressing the scale of Internet of Things. Yeah, so Jason, one of the undercurrents I've seen here at the show is we're talking about open source, we're talking about developers and the whole DevOps movement out here. If I look at Brocade, you've actually you know, gotten a lot of new people on the team that are helping to build software, heavily involved in uh, things like Open Daylight and Open Stack, and we, you know, we've managed to interview a lot of them uh, on theCUBE, and you know, it's a really good collection of talent. So first of all, kudos for bringing in all these people. Can yeah. you talk about kind of that, you know, the, the vision there, and uh, you know, it's, it's a little tough, because you, you know, I think of networking so much as a hardware-driven business, and that's a software offering that you guys have. It's, it's both a software offering and it's a software skill set, I think is what you're pointing out, and that is, you know, whether you refer to DevOps or now, I think NetOps is another term that's being used often. You know, we recognize that the more we rely on software as a delivery vehicle for value in, in the network, the more we have to have a software-centric skill set, the more we have to be able to accommodate programmatics of the network, whether it's SDN or 
RESTful APIs or whatever else it might be. OpenStack is another great example. So we're definitely building uh, expertise and competency around ultimate automation and programmatics of the network through things like DevOps and NetOps, absolutely. Right. So, you know, when I look at some of the kind of the, the, the bleeding edge applications, I'm curious when you look at things, you know, whether Hadoop or to the container market, CoreOS Fest was this week, DockerCon's coming up, um, you know, networking's a critical component of that. What would you take on that? How does Brocade help? Yeah, I think Hadoop is a great example. You know, big data is one of those new emerging workloads that ends up being very mission critical for a lot of customers. If you're a retailer, if you're a financial services firm, even a healthcare provider, you know, using big data analytics as a means by which you can understand your clients, understand their behaviors, where they are, what they're purchasing, et cetera, um, is going to be absolutely business critical for these, for these customers. So the ability for the network to accommodate the properties of a big data analytics application, sometimes very bursty, sometimes you have these any to one kind of traffic patterns in those applications, I think is really important. So one of the things that we've done with the VDX uh, switch that's now part of the MC Connectrix family is to have twice the on-chip buffering than any other switch in the industry. And I often get the question, you know, what makes an IP storage switch different than, different than a vanilla Ethernet switch? That's one good example. The ability to uh, buffer those bursts and make sure you don't lose any traffic when you have scaled out big data analytics applications. All right, so Jason, we're, we're running low on time. I want to talk, give you a chance to talk a little bit about the show, and also, there, there's a little fun thing that you did with EMC. We had Chad Sackage on yesterday. We're actually going to roll for our audience after this segment, a video you did. Can you tell us how that came to be? And, uh, you know, I, I, I did not realize that, you know, your next career was going to be as a comedian. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't either, actually. So I, I will say that, um, maybe just to, to wrap up my thoughts on the show, yeah. I would say that um, Brocade's ability to continue to deepen the relationship with EMC on behalf of our joint customers is the best I've ever seen it in years. The number of touch points, the number of collaboration opportunities, the number of integration opportunities we've got, vSpecs, vSpecs Blue, the work we're doing with um, VMAX and the extension here at the show, it's just amazing. And so we feel like we continue to be the best company on the planet in terms of our ability to partner. It's foundational to our business model and there's no better example than EMC. Um, the, the opportunity I had with Chad the other day was to do a, um, a Zach Galifianakis type of uh, interview, which uh, was unscripted, totally ad hoc, and we had a lot of fun with it. But um, I went into it thinking it would be like 50% serious content, 50% comedy. It was 99.9% .9 comedy, um, <laughs> as people will see from the, uh, from the clip. So it was a lot of fun. Chad's a great guy, and we have a great partnership. That's great. Well, Jason, thanks for stopping by. I got to see that. I didn't. I missed the. Uh, I missed the tape. I got to see that tape. There's well, actually three sessions, so you'll want to see all sessions. three. All right, good. Well, we will uh, make sure we get them on the playlist because we want to make sure we share them with the community. But thanks again for uh, stopping by and being a good sport. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. So uh, here with Jason, Stu Miniman, I'm Jeff Frick. We are day three at EMC World 2015, going wall to wall. A few more segments yet to go, so stay with us. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>